Natural leeches are variegated, mobile, and slender. The combination of marabou and grizzly saddles in the waist troll leech make it a killer on stillwater trout. Its subtle color scheme is particularly effective on clear lakes. The waist troll leech is one of my must-have leech patterns. Here are the materials you will need to add this deadly leech to your fly box. So let's tie the waist troll leech. Into the vise, I've placed a number 10 R74 Mustad 9672. I tie these in 10s and 8s most often. I'm going to take some lead wire or lead wire substitute that's about the diameter of the hook shank. So this is about uh, 15 thou. I place it into a bobbin to ease dispensing it. And we're just going to weight the front quarter of the hook shank. So I just get the lead on. And once I'm happy with it, just break it off at the front, break it off at the back, use my thumbnails to pinch this together, and I can slide it up the hook shank. And there I have basically the front quarter of the hook shank weighted. To help identify a weighted shank, there's a number of options. Some tires use different colored thread or keep all their weighted flies together in one box. I'm not that organized and the changing of thread is an extra step. What I like to do is simply take a red marker, you can use red nail polish as well, and I just give a liberal coating to that hook eye. And that will tell me, when I'm looking in my fly box, any fly with a red eye on it, that is a weighted fly. So now we're going to attach the tying thread. I'm using some Olive Done 8 in this case, it complements the brown olive color we're going to be using, and we'll get that started right in front of the lead. I'm going to take my thumbnail, push it up there, and just quickly build up a little thread ramp or dam. Hold that in place, and then get your tying thread moving forward over the lead to the back and repeat the process at the rear of the lead. And that's locked in place and then we continue down the shank just before it falls off into the bend. About halfway between the point of the hook and the back of the smash down bar. And if you like as well you could also add further security with a quick dab of head cement and that will help lock everything in place too. And this is the kind of step you could pre-lead a number of hooks before and so to ease your production tying if you're tying a number of waist roll leeches. For the tail, I'm going to use some of Spirit Rivers Jailhouse Marabou in olive and black. I've selected a nice plume I really like for my leeches fibers that have lots of little fibers on them. It gives the illusion of bulk without using too much material. So I'm just going to take one side of this little plume, isolate, basically stand the fibers up so they naturally even, and tear, and then fold what I've torn back onto what I haven't torn, and just simply work my way down the marabou plume until I've removed the clump that I want to take off. And there we go. I have a nice batch of marabou. The fibers are relatively, the tips of the fibers rather, are relatively uniform and they're ready to tie in. You can moisten your fingers if you like. That helps control the marabou. And we're going to make a tail that's about just about the shank length long. So what I like to do is actually bring that bobbin up to the rear of the lead and this will help create a uniform underbody which will make our actual body look better. So I'm going to measure my tail, that's how long I want it, transfer that measurement from my left hand to my right hand like so and this is where I'm going to trim the marabou so I know I have exactly enough marabou to form an underbody and the tail. And at that juncture, I just trim away the waist, 
hold that on top, soft loop over, second one, and then get progressively tighter. Don't let go of the marabou. Lifting up on it slightly, and that in combination with the thread tension will make sure your marabou doesn't spin and wrap around the shank. It stays on top nice and neat. I'm going to carry the tying thread forward, and there we have a nice little tail. If you've got a few longer fly fibers rather here, you can just pinch those away. I like to, if I can, measure all my tails. It's just personal preference. I think you get a nicer flowing tail with the tips intact due to the natural taper of the material. Those fibers are going to move and sway in the slightest of currents or under the slightest retrieves. Now, we can add a little flash to the fly, and this depends. Sometimes if I'm going to use this fly in really clear water, I may not add any flash at all. But I often like to add just a little bit of flash, so I'm going to use some crystal mirror flash here. And I'm just going to take two strands, no more than that, hold two of them along the near side of the hook, advance the tying thread forward a ways, come back, grab the second strands, second pair of strands, and hold them along the far side. So my flash trails right along the sides of the tail. And of course, there's so many flash op opportunities. I like the flashaboo type, the flat, as opposed to the crystal flash, because I think in these marabou tails, it breathes and moves better, and its action complements the action of the tail. And you can you leave them a little long, so there's a little bit of flash, if you like, sticking out the tail, just as a bit of attraction. This is to make your fly stand out, so the fish comes over, investigates, and hopefully grabs it. Now we're going to form the signature body of the waste troll leech. This fly got its name simply because of the disheveled look it has. It looks like a bunch of materials you threw into your waste troll. You know, the wife saver at the bottom of your bench, where all your waste materials go. So for the body, we're going to use some UV2 Grizzly Soft Tackle. We're going to use one brown soft tackle and one olive soft tackle. We're going to fold and manage them using a magic tool. So let's show you how this is done. I'd like to introduce you to the magic tool designed by Swiss fly tire Marc Pajon. The basic kit consists of three different size benches and two different size clips. You can also purchase the magnum tool which consists of an extra large bench and an extra large clip. These tools are excellent for dubbing dissimilar materials together or managing difficult to dub materials. Let's show you how they work. I've selected the large bench and the large clip from the basic magic tool set. I'm going to use these two tools to show you how to dub two different colored UV2 Grizzly Soft Tackles. I'm going to dub one brown and one olive. Let's show you how that easy this is. So this is the large bench and I've selected this for this example because of the size of the feathers I'm going to fold using the magic tool. The bench is spring-loaded Squeeze the bottom ends and the top opens. I'm going to start with a brown soft tackle feather. I've laid it on top of the bench, stem at this end, tip at the other. I'm going to come in with the longer olive feather. And I use the longer olive one. It helps pin the shorter bottom one between itself and the bench. And the stem of the feather is at the opposite end, tip obviously up here. And that's so you have basically an even width of stem getting folded into the tool. And I simply grab and push gently and the jaws open, accepting the two feathers and folding them in half. Like so. The next step is to remove the waste from each end. So you come in with your scissors, trim away the waste at one end, trim away the waste at the other end. Being careful not to squeeze the bottom of the tool because you'll simply open the bench. So let's get that waste material out of the way. And now in comes the clear clip. And the clip is going to be used to transfer this folded group of feathers into the dubbing loop and help you remove the stem. So I open the jaws and the clear feather allows you to adjust for depth. So if you want to dub something that's not too long, you just simply grab it further cl closer rather to the tips. I want to use the whole feather in this example, so I come in, grab both. Now, being very deliberate with your hand mo motions, open, slide away. I'll rotate that around, 
and you can see the stem of the feather you can see the stem of the feather isolated right here and that's what we want to remove so we just come in with our with a long pair of scissors and trim away those two feather stems right here and now we're left with a nice soft materials that are going to make an excellent body on any patterns, dragonflies, leeches, caddis, pupa. I really like to use this combination on leech patterns. So that's how you use the bench and the clip to manage and control what would be difficult to dub materials. If you tried to wind those feathers up the shank as you would with normal thinner stem feathers, it would be problematic due to the thickness of the stem. This tool is ideal for this application. With the materials now prepared using the magic tool, we have to form a dubbing loop so we can form the body using those materials. So I'm going to take the tying thread, go forward a little bit, pull down a manageable length, about four inches is fine. If you need uh, to go any further, it's better to use two smaller dubbing loops and try to manage one large ungainly loop. So I've just pulled that thread back up, secured it all the way down the shank, and you can see how nice and tight and close the dubbing loop is and now we're just going to simply advance our tying thread forward right up near the hook eye so we can tie it off. I'm going to put a spring type dubbing twister whatever your favorite dubbing twister is put that into the loop and let it hang. Now we've got the material that we folded using the magic tool bench and then grab the tips into the clear clip and remove the stems. We're going to open the loop, and this, you can see that the clip has a triangular taper to it. We're going to insert the tool into the loop, and then just pull it, let the thread slide off very gently, remove the clip, be very deliberate with these tools. If you want, you can push a little bit, but don't be too aggressive with this. And we start spinning slowly. Don't go full speed, because if you go full speed, the inertia of those motions can at times throw everything, all these soft fibers, out of the loop. And once the twist starts to form, you just carry on until the, you see it goes like a drill bit, and we're going to continue spinning until those fibers really start to radiate out at 90 degrees. Now that the dubbing loop is spun tight, for demonstration purposes, I just removed the dubbing tool. You, most times you wrap forward and just attach my hackle pliers just so it's easier for to see in the confines of how we're filming today. And now we're just going to start winding. I've got a little bit of thread bare, and that helps me aim my dubbing loop right at the base of the tail. I don't have to make my first wrap the best. I can take three or four wraps like this until I'm right at the base of the tail and I make sure that my tail is going to disappear naturally into this soft downy looking body and you can use your your, four, your thumb and forefinger of your non-tying hand, my left hand in this case and I'm going to have to unravel and I'm going to have to make a second application of dubbing and that's just the way she goes sometimes Bring that up, tie it off, trim away, stroke okay. back, come forward, form a second smaller loop, insert my dubbing tool and let hang. Bring the tying thread back up. And now we just have to go prepare another clump of dubbing, sorry, another clump of feathers using the magic tool. So I prepared another clump consisting of another olive and browned UV grizzly soft tackle, placed it into the clamp of the magic tool. Remember that wedge shaped profile so I can rotate. Try to get this as close to the hook as you can. Deliberate, open. If you want, you can carefully, carefully use your fingers to nudge. Don't be too aggressive. It's better to leave a little bump sticking out because you can obviously 
if you're not careful, push it right out of the way. And then start spinning your dubbing tool slowly to start with. You can pick up the tempo once the twist starts to take hold. That material is firmly locked in place. And when those fibers are now sticking out 90 degrees to the dubbing loop, as you can see now the fibers are, move, are all basically horizontal. And then we just take our material. And again, that little bare patch of thread helps us aim our dubbing. So I make sure this next clump starts right next door to the previous clump and I don't accidentally leave an open gap. Probably not going to make a hill of beans difference to the fish, but as fly tires we seem to mine that stuff. And then we're going to go right up. And that's close enough. A couple over the top. Reach in with our scissors. Trim away the waste on top. The remaining thread is underneath, so the two should never cross. Moisten our fingers slightly. Pull everything back. And just build up a neat and tiny thread head. Find our whip finisher. Whip finish. And your waist troll leech is done. So there you have it, the finished waist troll leech. May look a little disheveled dry, but when it's wet, this comes alive. The combination of the soft hackle fibers for the body, marabou tail, the weighted hook, this fly just pitches and undulates, and even when it falls through the water, be prepared for a take. And you've also got the UV enhanced body materials to give off that little UV signature that trout often key on under certain depth or lighting conditions. You've got everything going for you in one fly here. Make sure you've got a few of them in your box. For more information on fly fishing, and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you'll find lots of information, including fly fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, dates on my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online still water fly fishing shop. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. Please join the conversation on my Facebook page or follow me on Twitter. Thanks for watching, and please take the time to watch my other tying videos as well.